When I first wrote this book, Open Innovation, back in 2003, I did a Google search on that term, and I got about 200 page links back, uh, mostly saying things like, company so-and-so opened their innovation center at such-and-such -such a place. Uh, when I did the same search this past summer, I got 13 million page links back, uh, saying about a new model of innovation, which is really what Open Innovation, the book, is all about. So what Open Innovation has come to mean as a term uh, is the idea that companies need to make much greater use of external ideas and technologies in their own business and let unused internal ideas and technologies go outside to be used in other companies' businesses. The prevailing wisdom at the time was, if you want something done right, do it yourself. This new logic of open innovation turns that completely on its head and says the way that you win now is through collaboration, through sharing, through working together, building on top of one another, moving faster uh, than other companies. And your competitive advantage now comes from having more people working with you than with anyone else. Once people get the idea that, yeah, we should really open up, we should do more with other people's stuff, and we should let some of our unused stuff be used by others, once they get to that point, a few things start to happen. One is they try to build stronger relationships with universities to access external ideas and technologies. They work differently with their suppliers because suppliers are not simply vendors delivering something to a spec, but potential sources of new innovation. They also work differently with their own employees because employees' ideas that aren't going to be used in our company might still be valuable in some other company. And for the employees, this is a wonderful thing because instead of having the frustration of working for years on something that never sees the light of day, now are they, there are these alternative ways for ideas to get to the market, even if your own company doesn't do it. So companies can work with outside intermediaries to scout for ideas. They can put up their own websites to solicit contributions from other people to suggest ideas. They can even list some of their own projects and patents and other intellectual property for others to make use of if they want to do it. So all these things start to happen once people start to think about opening up. It's really been products and technologies for the most part uh, where open innovation has really been developed. My new book, Open Services Innovation, looks at innovation in service businesses and actually makes the discovery that even in traditional product businesses, more and more revenues are coming from services, not from products. So whether you're making a product or a service, we really need a new mindset uh, toward innovation and that's what Open Services Innovation describes. A good example of this uh, is actually a company that I studied uh, in my first book, which is Xerox. Uh, Xerox has today uh, still sells lots of copiers and lots of printers to companies all over the world. But the services innovation that they have is an offering they call managed print services. So Xerox will offer now to its customers to take over all of their copiers and printers, no matter who made them, no matter where they're installed in the organization across the country or across the world, and they will manage all of those copiers and printers for the customer and only charge the customer per copy that's delivered. So what the customers really want are the copies. They don't really want to have to master all the arcane intricacies of copiers and printers, and here at Haas we always have printers going down for one reason or another. Companies like Xerox know more about copiers and printers than any of their customers. So it makes a lot of sense that they can do a better job managing it. And for the customer, it's a great deal because they take care of all of your copiers and printers, no matter who bought them and what company sold them to you. And they do it for all one simple cost per copy. So what was a fixed cost of having to buy all this equipment, hire the staff to keep them up and running, all those costs, now are shifted through this offering of managed print services to a simple variable cost for a certain price for each page. Companies that find themselves fighting what I would describe as the commodity trap are probably the ideal target for this book. As uh, technology becomes more and more global, as manufacturing has shifted globally and we have now global supply chains, it's really become tougher and tougher to sustain high margins just making products because the same methodologies that make those products like Six Sigma quality, total quality management, supply chain management, all of these techniques are now well understood all around the world. And labor costs are lower, even the costs of capital are often lower in different parts of the world. 
If all you're doing is offering a product, it's really hard to avoid being commoditized over time by all these forces. So for somebody who's fighting that in their business, my book, Open Services Innovation, describes a way to escape the commodity trap by wrapping services around those products. One of the things that I find in the open services innovation is the role of the customer is much more involved throughout the innovation process. When you make a product, typically you get some insights from customers that define the specifications you want for the product. You go through your whole development process and at the end, you give it to the customer and say, here it is. Hope you like it and hope that their preferences then are the same ones they told you about at the beginning. In a services mindset, uh, you don't have these tangible artifacts called products. You've got these intangible experiences that consumers receive from these things. So they need to be much more involved uh, in actually helping to participate and even determine to some extent what it is they get from the service. So you and I might have the exact same service but leave with different experiences of that service because of the different things that you and I did during the process. What I'm hoping for is uh, for companies in a wide range of industries uh, to really look at this and think about changing their own mindset to focus more on things that really delight and add value for their customers and will help them make some more money in the process.